Hello everyone, let's talk about personalization. First of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Facundo Giuliani. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm a developer relations engineer at Storyblock. Storyblock is a headless content management system and I will tell you a little bit more about it uh, later during the talk. Uh, I'm also one of the organizers of React Buenos Aires. Uh, React Buenos Aires is the biggest React community in Argentina and we also organize a monthly meetup in the city. Uh, I'm an Auth0 ambassador, a Prisma ambassador, and a Claudinary Media Developer Expert. If you want to talk about any of these topics or anything, <laughs> basically, you can contact me on Twitter. My handle is Facundo Surdo. So let's jump on the talk. Has it happened to you that you go to a coffee shop and the waiter uh, refers to you uh, by your name or the waiter already knows uh, your usual order? Or probably you went to your local brewery or your local bar and the person at the bar already uh, is recommending you a beer based on uh, previous orders that, that you did on that, on that same bar. If that happened to you, then you were personalized. You were experiencing uh, what we call personalization, which is basically the ability to offer exclusive offers uh, and experiences to personas based on existing data. Probably the, the term data sounds a little bit uh, technical, but all the details that we can get from uh, the different uh, people that is using our products or services, we will call it data, even if it's abstract, let's say. But we are uh, web developers, so we want to talk about web personalization. Web personalization is the ability to deliver this uh, content granularly and offer exclusive web experiences to the different personas uh, that we are identifying based on existing data. So if we want to the uh, web world, let's say, some examples that we can see of personalization are online retailers uh, providing you target offers based on uh, your browsing behavior. An example would be Amazon. If you go to the Amazon website, you can uh, get uh, some uh, recommendations of products based on your previous purchases or your browsing history or probably you are using a, a news and media platform and you get specific content based on where you live, for instance. An example could be on Netflix. If you go to Netflix right now, you will see the most popular shows happening in your country, to give you an example, or probably based on your previous, the previous shows that, that you already enjoyed. So in these cases that we are implementing personalization, uh, we want to do it because we can get different benefits. One of the benefits is that we are enhancing the user experience. We are offering to our users, the users of our products, the visitors of our website, a great user experience because we are talking to them based on what is interesting for them. We will also get better qualified leads if we want to sell products or services if we are narrowing the options for the different users based on their interests, we will be able to get better qualified leads and we will get uh, better uh, deals uh, at the end of the day and we will be able to sell more our product and our services. The same we can do with landing pages and call to actions. We can optimize them because based on the behavior of the users or what they are interested into, we can modify our pages or our call to actions to get the information that we want from the user and after that offer experience, uh, custom experiences to them based on those interests. And finally, we will get greater brand affirmity because the users will come and use our services and products happy because we are talking to them and we are offering them a better overall experience so our brand will get uh, better uh, reviews and we will get uh, we will uh, be uh, more popular let's say so if we talk about personalization we can identify different types of personalization one of them is what we call the explicit personalization where the experience that we are customizing is based on criteria that is set by the visitors. An example of this could be a form that the user is filling with details related to them or they are answering a survey that we present to the visitors of our website so they explicitly are telling us what, they, uh, what are their interests. Different is the case of the implicit personalization where we are managing the experiences based on the behavior of the user or the context of the user. 
An example would be, as we saw with Netflix, based on the country where that person lives or based on the previous purchases of the user, we can set this implicit personalization. Another type of personalization is the interruptive, which is the experience that the person is not expecting. An example would be a model on a website or a notification on your mobile phone, for instance. And finally, we have the seamless personalization, which is the custom experience that the user are uh, uh, expecting, and it's an integral part of the whole service or product. An example could be, if you uh, use Spotify to listen to music, you want to enter to Spotify and to find um, interesting shows for you or uh, new albums, new releases that, have, uh, that are related to your uh, musical interests. So, let's say that we want to implement a personalization strategy. We have to follow a certain list of steps. The first step is to collect data from our visitors. So in order to do that, we have different ways of doing it, but we have to get this data and details from the people that is using our products. So we have different ways of doing it. We, we can ask the visitors directly, we can map the customer journey based on where they live or the previous purchases, for instance. We can track certain uh, paths that they are following on our website with cookies. Uh, we can track with marketing emails, different strategies to uh, at the end of the day, get the same result that we are expecting, which is getting data and information from our users and visitors. The second step to follow would be create customer profiles. We have to define the profiles of users of our products and, and services, or personas, let's say, we can go as uh, detailed as we want. We can uh, name these people, we can set an age, a description, what are their interests. Basically, we are defining the person that we are going to talk to when we are defining our custom experiences. The third step is setting our goals. Why we want to implement personalization strategies, what we are looking for. We, are, we want to increase our, conver our conversions, uh, we want to reduce the bounce rate of our website, we want to uh, improve our upsells. Depending on the, the goals of our department, our team, or even our company, we will have uh, different uh, goals uh, that we want to, to follow, and that's what we want to set in order to plan and implement a strategy. I mean, we want to define why we want to set a uh, personalization um, strategy or uh, a campaign, right? So in order to start and plan in these campaigns, we will have to identify the uh, involved areas and pages of our website. We have to draft the campaigns that we want to uh, set up. We are going to prioritize these campaigns to see uh, which ones are uh, easier to implement or which ones uh, will have more impact on our users and, our, and the results that we want to uh, get. And finally, we are going to test these campaigns, measure the success, and then iterate to see if the campaigns are working or if we need to improve something or probably we want to uh, implement a different campaign. So let me show you a quick demo on how to implement a personalization strategy. In this case, I created a website. This website is an, an e-commerce website, let's say, where I have my homepage with uh, well, some content, and I have a, a, this banner that offers different uh, discounts and, uh, well, offers to, uh, for different products to the visitors of our website. Then I have a catalog page where I can see the different products that we are offering on our website, and we also have these uh, special catalogs for a specific type of products. We have sportswear and elegant clothing. So these different categories of products that we are offering, we want to identify the users that are interested into the sports world, let's say. So to uh, consider that the person is interested on sports world, we will say that is the people that is clicking on the sports world catalog and they want to see the sports world uh, products that we offer. And the first time that they enter to that catalog, uh, we are going to consider that person as a sportswear uh, fan, let's say. So when we are doing that, what we will do later is whenever that person that showed interest on sportswear product, 
come back to uh, our website and they go to the home page, the banner that we are going to show on our home page at the top of the page will be related to specific sportwear uh, products. So as you can see, now we changed the banner and we are showing sportswear uh, offers and discount to that uh, people. And that's because we want to sell more sportswear product. So this simple example, I created it using Storeblock. Storeblock is a headless content management system that will help us to create and manage the content of our website, our project. And we can structure the content uh, in a component approach, so it will be super easy to link uh, our, the, the content that we are creating with the visual representation of the content and the different React components that we will have on our project. The, an, another cool thing that Storeblock offers is a real-time visual editor that will help the, the editors, the, the users, the marketers to create the content and see in real time how the content that they are creating is going to look like before they publish this content to the production environment and they uh, publish the content. And for the front end of our application, our project, we are going to use Remix because, well, this is the Remix Conf, but because it you will see that it's super easy to implement this project and this strategy using uh, the features that Remix offered us. So let's go back to our demo because I want to show you, I mean, we saw the, the, the website here, but I want to show you the uh, content structure that we created on Storeblock. As you can see here, we have the home page that we created with the different parts of our page. We have the rich text block here with some text that we are showing on the home uh, page. As you can see, I can add more text and change the content of our page and see in real time how the content is going to look like on the visual editor. You can see that because I changed it. And then we have this personalized content block. And as you can see, this personalized content has different content variants inside of it. This variants, you can see we have a generic one, and then we have one for sportswear and one for elegant. This content variant will contain all the, the content, the, the blocks, the components that we want to show for each one of the uh, user types that we are identifying. So we are identifying the sportswear fan, let's say, and the elegant clothing fan. So for the sportswear, you can see that we are setting the user type and then we are setting the content that we want to show to them, which is basically this call to action, this banner that we define with all the different details. We have the headline, we have the text, and we have an image that we want to show on the different banners and the different um, call to actions that we are setting for our home page. So as you can see, the one that we are seeing here is the generic one. The generic is the one that we are going to show to all the users. We have the text, the image, and all the details that we can set here in a store block. The cool thing is that these different uh, blocks or components that we are setting on store block, we are going to link them with uh, React components in the front end of our application. You will see that later. This is the home page. So what I wanted to show you now is besides the home page, we also have our catalog, the catalog pages that you saw. So the catalog, we will have one page for each one of the types of catalogs that we are managing. If I go to the sportswear catalog, you will see that we are basically selecting a catalog or setting a catalog block with the category that we want to display. What this is going to do is when we are setting the category, the page will show all the products related to that particular category. So where are the products coming from? If I go to store block again, you can see the structure of content here. I'm managing all the products here and we have all the products and the different products can have different categories. As you can see, we are setting, for instance, the image, the price, the name of the product, and also the category. In this case, it's sportswear. So this is how we are structuring the content of our project. What I'm going to show you now is the code of the Remix project. So in this Remix project, what I did was to set a root a route at the top level of my project where I'm going to render all the pages of my website that are at the, at the root level, let's say, if, I, if we are managing a folder uh, structure. We are connecting to the Storeblock API to retrieve all the content that we want to display based on the page that we are visiting. Here we are getting the URL of the page that we are visiting. We are setting some parameters and we are calling the Storeblock API to get the story, which is the page, that this 
are representing the, the URL that we are visiting on our website. Uh, finally, we have the, the main uh, function on our page, which is going to render the content based on that story or that page. In this case, we are setting some parameters here and we are uh, initializing the uh, real-time uh, visual uh, editing experience with this hook that is provided by the Storblock React SDK that we can use. And then what we are going to render is some content that as we are going to use the same logic to render all the pages of our website, we don't know which components we are going to render, so we can use this store block component, which is going to help us to render any component uh, that is coming from the store block API and based on the visual representation that we are setting on our website. So in the case of a home page, we are going to use this route. As you can see, we created the different components for the different blocks that we are managing. The one that I want to focus on today is the personalized content that you were able to see on the project. And this personalized content, what is going to return basically is the content uh, that we are going to show uh, for that block or that, um, or that component based on the user type. How we are defining the user type for our visitors? We are setting a cookie whenever they visit for the first time one of the catalog pages of our website. So this cookie, we are getting it from uh, using React use cookie and based on the value of that cookie, we are going to set the user type and based on the user type, we are going to filter the different variants of the personalized content section that we have on Storyblock and based on, uh, we are going to display the correct variant based on the type of user that is visiting our page. To set this user type, we have another route for the catalog. The catalog is going to see if we have already set a user type uh, and, and a cookie for the visitor. If we didn't do that, we are going to set that cookie for the first time with the category uh, that the user is visiting. How we define that category? How do we know the category that the user is visiting? Well, in this case, basically, uh, using the URL that the user is visiting. So we are going to get the category from the URL of our page. We are going to use that category also to filter the different products that are coming from the Storyblock API and display the catalog based on the category that the user is visiting and all the products that have that category, as you can see here with the filter query that we are sending to the Storyblock API. We are initializing a catalog component and sending all the products, which are the ones that we already filter from the Storyblock API. So this is a simple example to see how to implement a personalization strategy. As you can see, we follow all the steps. We collected the data from the visitors, which is basically uh, what catalog are they visiting for the first time and uh, what's uh, their interest on the products that we sell. We created a customer profile, in our case, a user or a person that is interested on sportswear. We set our goals, which is sell more uh, sportswear products. Uh, of, uh, and finally, the strategy that we are preparing is offering uh, discounts and offers to this type of users, showing uh, a specific message or specific content on the home page of our website. This is a... Uh, short example that I wanted to show you uh, as a trigger for you to start thinking on possible uh, strategies that you can think or ways of getting the data from the visitors or uh, ways of implementing these personalization strategies. So thank you very much. I hope you uh, enjoy the talk and learn something new and please feel free to contact me and we can uh, talk later. Bye.